All right, let's get very controversial and talk about what I think a person needs if they want to go sleep in the woods, whether it's backpacking or otherwise. The first thing you should start with is a shelter. In my case, I have a flat tarp, a ground sheet, the stakes necessary to guy out the tarp, a bug bivy, and my trekking poles. Together with that, I can lay out a shelter. So the next question is, how do I sleep in the shelter? Well, I have an inflatable sleeping pad and a sleeping bag. This one is Western Mountaineering. If you have nothing else, with those things you at least know that you're not going to die overnight and that's great but there's a couple extra things there um, one of which is that in order to get your sleeping bag compressed down you're going to need some type of container some people don't use anything but i like this waterproof roll top sack what's next well eating is good and having water so I have a bag an ever new bag and a Sawyer filter the Sawyer water filter can thread on top of the bag this is a cutoff water bottle and you use that to scoop water into the bag these really don't fill up uh, on their own by sticking them in water unless you had a stream coming off of a rock very perfect situation you hardly ever encounter so the scoop lets you fill up the bag and then with this you can squeeze that into a plastic water bottle to drink from uh, I like smart water bottles I don't have one pictured because I need to get some new ones the other thing is that once you've made clean water into your Sawyer water bottles or other water bottles you can fill some more water in here and uh, carry several liters if you need to. This is a back flush tool for the Sawyer in case it gets clogged. And this is a coupling. I put the coupling on the clean side of the Sawyer and then also the bottle that I'm filtering into. That way I can just hang this and my bottle is connected with the filter and I roll it, squeeze water through that takes care of my water. I do have some backup filtration, uh, rather some backup purification tablets, which uh, you can use in case you encounter a water source that you think has human or other animal activity in it, um, which would be like viruses. Um, so your filters do not, and basically I don't think any pore type filter can take care of a virus. So this is good for most situations but occasionally I'll throw a tablet in. Uh, this one is basically like a type of bleach or something. Sodium dichloroisocyanurate dihydrate and sodium chloride. Mm. It does not taste good, but it will purify. Now for eating, I have a titanium pot and a titanium spoon, a smooth spoon. That lets you get all the food off. A stove and a fuel canister. Um, obviously, with this situation, I'm not really cooking. I'm boiling water and adding it to a dehydrated meal of some kind. But those are pretty good, pretty nutritious. I typically use that just for dinner. During the day, or even um, for breakfast, I'm not really doing anything other than eating different types of bars and snacks. So that keeps the kitchen kit pretty simple. Now we've got a way to sleep, we've got a way to eat, we've got a way to drink water. Next thing is we're going to have to use the bathroom at some point. Um, so we have a trowel to dig a hole, um, a couple of handful of compressed towelettes which I don't really use. Uh, but they're kind of a good backup. Some biodegradable soap, 
which should ultimately still go in your cat hole, and a laboratory spray bottle. So in my case, I'm filling this with clean water, digging a hole, doing my business, washing, one hand stays clean, one hand's dirty until that hand gets washed. And that's that. Oh, I should add when I'm sleeping, I also have an inflatable pillow because I need it. Now, if you have food, you should probably have some way to store it. In my case, this is a roll top bag that I can hang from a tree if I'm in uh, a place where there are good trees and bears are maybe not so much of a concern. Alternatively, if they are and there aren't trees or anything like that, I'll take a bear canister. Now, from there, we have some gadgets. I have, I always like to have a compass and I'll take paper maps of the route that I'm going on. I have kind of a tool kit, some micro scissors, a lighter, some different tapes for gear. Um, this is, I think, tenacious tape. And then this is some Dyneema tape, which I can use for my Dyneema tarp. Floss for sewing. Uh, a couple of patches for the uh, sleeping pad, things like that. Um, cables for any of the electronics that I might be bringing that I expect to charge, whether that's my phone, my Garmin in reach for an emergency communication, my headlamp, and this is my battery. And you don't always need all these things. If you're doing an overnighter, you're not going to need a battery necessarily. So this is good for an extended trip if needed. Um, this is a first aid kit. I have a relatively complete one compared to a lot of people. Um, different types of bandages, different types of chafe tape, uh, Luco tape, um, toothpaste tablets, ibuprofen, things like that. But even then, it's not very heavy. Trail toes. I have a little container of that, but trail toes is a type of uh, sort of cream that you can put on your feet and between your toes, and it helps everything glide and prevent blisters. You can put that on any other part of your body that you might get any type of chafing from. From there, you need some type of underwear, synthetic. Make sure it agrees with you. Some type of liner sock some type of wool hiking sock. Some people won't use a liner and that's okay, but for me, that prevents blisters. Then you need some type of pant or short. I think pants are better for sun protection and bug protection. And you can get some very lightweight ones and it's not, not really uncomfortable even if it's warm. Some type of shirt. I actually like a sun hoodie as opposed to a shirt because that's also bug and sun protection. I like a hat. I need some type of way to protect from the rain. Uh, more of a hypothermia prevention thing. Um, if you are hiking long enough, you're exerting yourself and the climate inside your rain gear um, reaches 100% humidity. But that's important because this is still a barrier that keeps, I would rather have warm humid air. Uh, against my skin than cold water that fell from the sky. So if, if you're not hiking and you're standing around, then it's even more important. You could just get in your shelter, but if for some reason you can't, this is more about preventing hypothermia than quote unquote staying dry. So this is a rain jacket and this is a rain kilt, which is also nice as a secondary um, piece of ground cover underneath my tarp if I need to lay some more stuff out. Uh, from there I also have uh, a very light type of uh, legging to wear in my sleeping bag and a basically a type of hoodie sweater thing from Patagonia for insulated. Um, this is also backup if for some reason things get really cold um, and this is your sort of shoulder season, summer season stuff. Um, you know, you would need to bulk up more, obviously, if this was going to be a winter expedition. Um, and then on top of that, I have a very lightweight 
uh, goose down jacket. Um, so this is good for the mornings, and then this is complimentary at night. Um, you obviously need a backpack to carry all this stuff. And you need hiking shoes. Um, I really do not, and most people do not recommend any type of boot. Um, everything that you carry should be lightweight. Going lightweight, the first rule is just don't take as much stuff. The second rule is the stuff that you do take, make as light as you can. This represents relatively expensive higher end gear, such that the base weight is 10, 12 pounds, depending on what you're doing. And there's no reason to need boots for that. But even if you were carrying 30 or 40 pounds, I would still recommend some type of trail runner because your feet can breathe, they're very happy, they're very flexible. The idea of ankle support is, well, I'm not a podiatrist, but I don't think that's ever really saved someone too much from hurting their ankle. I think that typically has a lot more to do with your muscular strength, but like I said, this video is controversial enough, so we're going to stray away from that. Suffice it to say, I don't get blisters, I don't get injuries when I wear some nice light trail runners. Um, you can go look it up. There are some studies by the Army or other parts of the military as far as weight on your feet and how that translates into energy expenditure. So it's actually very sensitive and it's good to get those numbers down. Um, some things that you don't need but are nice to have. Um, a cup, although I typically am going to boil water or heat water and drink my coffee out of my titanium. So this cup doesn't usually come along, but it might. This is a insulated envelope of sorts that um, I'll put a dehydrated meal in once I've added the boiling water. And this helps retain the heat for longer so that it cooks more thoroughly. Um, and this is a a Baco lac blender, I think it is. Um, this is a saw, a folding saw. Um, and this is for, you know, if I'm going someplace where there is wood to be cut to make a fire, this is very handy. Um, typically, these two things are more about a cold season thing. Um, if you put boiling water in a bag and set it on the ground in the winter, uh, you know, it's going to get cold really quick and your meal not, might not get cooked or rehydrated. And, you know, it gets dark early in the winter, so you really need a, a way to get some good fuel um, for your fire. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting around in the dark wondering, what are you doing in the woods? So, altogether, that's what I bring backpacking. Um, 10, 12 pounds, depending on the, the season and that sort of thing. Um, you can bring more, you can bring less, but I'm very happy with these things, and I think a lot of people are. Because after all, most of the advice I got was from others, um, but I think it works out great.